Hey Basement Collective and thank you for watching another Basement Collective Battle Report. Today we are doing the first mission for Battle for Dover Prime. We got Davis here, uh, that blue, that bright light's gonna put some blue dots on our camera, but it's okay. So, I just wanted to show you guys the table we're going on. Again, what this mission is, is the Space Marines are going in to help a Tau... Yeah, what's happened here in yeah. the Dover Prime <laughs> mission is, uh, you the viewers have selected that this is going to be the first mission option. We are going to have space wings trying to rescue the Tau from Do uh, not from Dover Prime, from Mir's Hope, this planet that we're on right now. Uh, the Tau are on the planet, but the Imperials didn't really know that. I mean, the Imperials on this planet knew, so maybe that commander's a bit of a traitor, but right now it's a lot more important to get the Tau on your side than it is to like start pointing fingers of treachery and stuff like that. So, uh, Urban's mission today is going to be defend against my Tyranids I'm going to be having Tyranids popping up everywhere, coming after him. So long as Irvin has one guy survive, then another whole half of his force that he's not even going to be allowed to use in this mission <laughs> is going to get away. If he gets away and more Tau survive than Imperials, then Irvin will have successfully recruited the Tau. Okay, yeah, so here is our table. We're going to look like a bunch of ruins. A bunch of forests and hills. Uh, just for logistics, uh, the the big ruin pieces and the small ruin pieces are going to be four up saves. The crater and the hills are going to be six up save, and the forest are going to be five up save. Of course, if you go to gun in a crater, you get two plus two cover save. Other than that, the random ADL pieces. We're just trying to show that the the tau have fortified up a bit. So the uh, of course their ADL pieces will be the four plus like in the rule book. But other than that, this is what the table looks like. We'll be back with uh, the armies and show you what they look like and the different rules we're using for this mission. Now, here's how we're gonna do the game. Be essentially, we each have, I have my I, my armies, 1500 points, I split very close down the middle between Tau and Space Wolves. Uh, he has 1500, uh, Davis has 1500 points of Tyranids. We're, we're essentially splitting both of our armies into two groups. What happens with my two groups is at the beginning of the game, I roll a dice, and uh, basically, I just randomize one state, one army I get to use for the fight, and the other one is fleeing to get off the planet. So one's holding down the fort, as the other one is trying to get away from the Tyranids because this planet on Mirror's Hope is getting eaten by Tyranids. It's almost left. For those who are into the history of 40k a little bit, this is actually a third edition mission called Rear Guard. So if any of you can pull out that old big rule book, you'll be able to find it in there. I think it was in the battle missions mm -hmm. yeah there was like four different kinds really cool i'm looking forward to this yeah it'll be fun so now for my two forces uh i try to split down the middle get the same amount of firepower in each and uh, it's one one's a bit more one has a bit few few more points than the other but they're still pretty close for so for this first half of the army for the space i have a vindicator with a storm sh storm sh seed shield <laughs> and a storm bolt there, there you go uh a thunder wolf squad the champion has a wolf claw other than that, the other guys have chain swords, all the storm shields, and I have a rhino with a wolf guard battle leader in there. He has a he has a he has a power sword, but he also has a storm shield. Unfortunately, I didn't have the model, but that guy does have a storm shield and a power sword with five blood claws and a rhino with a storm bolt. But that's basic. For the tau in this one, I got twelve fire warriors and two broadsides with smart missile systems and missile pods, high yield missile pods. In the second part of the army, I have a more, well, just a different type. For the space, so again, the same Thunderwolf detachment. One with the the leader has a wolf claw. Every, everybody has storm shields and there's two uh, chain swords. I have a rhino with five blood claws. For the Tau, I have Kadre Fireblade with 12 fire warriors, a Riptide with the Ion Cannon, I think that is, and a Hammerhead with the rail gun with sub munitions. So that's what I have here. I think it's a, a really interesting mix you got going on mm -hmm. with these uh, these different forces. No matter what, so long as you win, yeah. or as long as you survive on the table, there will be enough Tau retreating off the planet that you're gonna ally them. So that's a exactly. good job uh, putting this force together. Yeah. Let's say there's a good mix of units here. I'm a little bit concerned. Yeah. Now, I, what I could have done is if I wanted to be gutsy, I could have made one a lot bigger than the other and just hoped I rolled high and get the bigger force in. But I wanted to play it fair because I'm not much of a risk taker. I did buy a lottery ticket today because it is $60 million. <laughs> oh man, I gotta go buy a lottery ticket. Yes, yeah, $60 million <laughs> with 25 additional million dollar prizes. That's correct. 
Yeah. So, so there you go, OLG. Give yeah. us a little bit of money for we just <laughs> plugged you. Yeah, the biggest the biggest lottery prize in Canadian history. Davis, if we win, we'll uh, fund the tournament. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we want to fund the tournament. So that is my fifteen hundred points of the rear guard mission with Tau and Space Wolves together. Now here is Davis's Tyranids 1500 points. Now the way it's splitting is down the middle right here. So yeah, so everything that you see here from the purple guys to the right, that's going to be one of my forces. Mm -hmm. Just like Irvin, I've got to split my forces in two. But unlike Irvin, I'm going to get to play with all of my yeah. forces. <laughs> the one that comes on for me is going to come on from reserves in the first turn. So one of these two is going to come on, the others are going to come on a lot slower than normal reserves, only coming in on a 5 up on turn 2, a 4 up on turn 3, and a 3 up on turn 2. Uh, sorry, then a 3 up on turn 4, four uh, and so on. Yeah. Um, so what this is going to be is I got two pretty similar forces here, both of them, both sides have a flyrant with mm -hmm. Hive Commander. Uh, that I'll get to in a moment why that's important. Both sides have a Trigon Prime mm -hmm. that's got some good synapse and the uh, terror from below kind of thing that's going to make some holes in the ground. Uh, this side here has got a squad of Hormagons and a squad of Termagons and this squad of Termagons has an unpainted, I'm sorry folks, strangle web gaunt, so a little flamer template. Uh, and we got zone throws. Uh, these are two proxied zone throws today along with an actual painted one. On the purple side, we've got two squads of Termagants. These ones both have Devourers uh, and a squad of Gene Stealers, along with a Broodlord. Now, the thing about the Hive Commander is pretty interesting because right now, before I roll to see which side comes out, I'm selecting both of my Devour Termagants to have outflank for this mission. So pretty much whichever side comes on should give me a bit of choice on to how to attack you. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how that turns out. Okay, so that is that army. Uh, now, so essentially, there's no uh, there's no objectives in this no game. No objectives. There's no kill points. No. Nope. The point of this game is for me to survive. If he lives with just one, one model, model, he yeah, wins. Random game length in this. So starting at the end of turn five, we'll see if Irvin wins or if he has to survive another turn of Tyranid Wrath. Exactly. So it will be a very, very fun game. I'm looking forward to it. We'll be right back with the rolls to see which missions, which armies are deploying. So we just rolled off the camera. Uh, just a few things. Our Warlord Traits and Psychic Powers are the deployment. We're doing Dawn of War deployment like this. And my Warlord Trait, I got Saga of the Hunter. The Warlord has the outflank and stealth special rolls. Uh, outflank's not that good because I really don't want to outflank, but my stealth special rules will be good. But my warlord may not even come in, so my warlord may be the one hightailing it. So we'll see that. And Davis, what did you roll? Uh, my warlord, which is going to be the green tyrant, has got nature's bane. So uh, when he moves, when he's done moving, one of these forests, with, if they're within 12 inches, I can make into carnivorous forests, which <laughs> will try to munch on your guys. Uh, also for psychic powers, this one here has got catalyst along with Psychic Scream. Mm -hmm. uh, these guys got their Warp Blast automatically, obviously, mm -hmm. plus Paroxysm. Okay. Uh, this guy comes automatically with the Horror. And over here, we have Paroxysm and Psychic Scream again. Awesome. Okay, so now we need to roll to see which force comes on. So I got my die here. So basically what's gonna happen is a one, two, three, this force will come in. A four, five, six, that force will come in. I don't know which one I hope for more. Yeah, me either, so. Uh-oh, uh let's see it. Okay, so four. four. So we are using the one with Kadre Fireblade, Ooh. with the twelve Fire Warriors, the three Thunder Wolves, a Riptide, a long a Hammerhead, and a Rhino with the five Blood Claws. Which means your Warlord is running away. My Warlord is gonna lead the retreat of hightailing it away from the Tyranids to get off the planet with the Tau, so we can secure some Tau reinforcements for this campaign because the Terranids are pretty big and we don't have many forces to go. So, that's what's happening on my table side. Now, Davis? We're actually gonna wait. I, we gotta wait until you are fully deployed. Oh, we yeah. have no idea yet what's coming in. Okay, yeah, no problem at all. So I will deploy my army. Uh, do I choose the table side I wanna deploy on? You know what, go redhead. You are auto, you're already the defender here. Yeah. The Terranids are coming on. I'm gonna be coming in from everywhere. You got yeah. no chance, go play anywhere. Okay, so we'll be back after I deploy my army for this mission, the first mission in battle for Dovar Prime. We are on the planet Mirror's Hope, trying to help out some Tau. So I am deployed, we'll just go over my deployment quickly. 
I have Kodja Fireblade and the 12 Fire Warriors in this ruin right here for some ruin save. My three Thunderwolves. Riptide towing this ruin for a ruin save. I have my Rhino with my five Blood Claws and my Hammerhead right here. So, we have to go see what Davis is going to do. So, Davis, you have the purple, you have the green side. We're going to see yeah, which one comes in. Purple or green. So, on a four up, it'll be purple, and the purples have the gene sealers with them. Mm -hmm. On three or less, it'll be the green, and the green's got the Hormagons with them. And again, them. the winner, whoever, whichever one comes in, all Deep Strikes first turn, and then the army that doesn't come in. Well, actually, it's not Deep Strike. It will just be in from reserves. Oh, okay. have to follow all the regular reserve rolls. But I've done some things here, as you probably noticed, that kind of does some things with that, right? Yes. Uh, whether it'll be coming in from sides, or outflanking, or up <laughs> from underneath. So let's go ahead and roll, see this. Five. It will be the purples coming in purples first. Coming in first. Oh, okay. So the Davis is going to go first because it makes no sense for me to go first, and that was the in the old robot attackers go first because there's nothing on the board for the defenders to do. So we'll be back at the end of turn Duel. one for Tyranids. Actually, you know what? We'll come. Yeah, we'll, we'll come in after he, everything comes out of reserve, just to show where everything is, Ooh. and then we'll come back at the end. <laughs> okay. See you soon. See you soon. So Davis has everything from the first attachment that came in. So uh, just what this thing, deep strike. He put pr 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 pretty, pretty gutsy. Ran right behind the the uh, hammerhead. Hammerhead. Sorry, <laughs> I, I'm not a cow player. And he the the trigon has the deep strike uh, draw pod special rules. So he rolled a nine that way. And he couldn't go. So he landed right behind the hammerhead. So that was pretty good for him. And then he rolled out flank for his two squads of termagons and his gene stealers, and they all ended up on a two. So they all came on the right side of the board and then his flyer flew onto the board right here. So that's what it looks like there. So we'll be back at the end of ta Tyranids. Turn one. Turn one. Also just wanted to give a shout out, uh, just a few things here. This wonderful battle mat was provided to us by Table War and Frontline Gaming. So you can check their website out there. They make an awesome battle mat. We really like this one. They make many kinds and as well, this terrain, uh, it wasn't provided free, but uh, we did pay for like a regular customer, but this is made by Adam from Greenleaf Terrain. Th he makes the best turn in the market at the best price, so this stuff is amazing. I mean, we do have some Gale Force 9 stuff, but the custom looking stuff was made by Adam. We do really like it. You should go check him out. Uh, send him an email at greenleafterrain at gmail.com. So, the end of turn at turn one, the psychic phase. Uh, what I forgot what happened, but... So, in the psychic phase, uh, the Hive Tyrant, the Brood Lord, they tried to do some shenanigans. Brood Lord tried to cast Tor on them, which they got through, despite Kevin, uh, Irvin, I should say, sorry, uh, not even throwing any dispel dice at him, just mm -hmm. like, hey, we're, we're pretty brave. And the Hive Tyrant cast Paroxysm on them, though, and that did reduce their weapon skill and ballistic skill down to one. Yeah, so that's what that dice means right there. Uh, now, actually, we almost forgot make yeah. leadership, leadership test. test. They're good. good. All right. And a leadership test on these guys. Yes. They are bad. Uh oh. Which is really bad for me. All right. <laughs> that's three dice back. They are off the table. That's 10 inches. And well, it would be first back. blood, but that doesn't matter in this <laughs> mission. <laughs> so, I needed those guys. And uh, also in the turn, uh, they yeah. lost some Tau Fire Warriors to sustained devour shooting. Mm -hmm. And the Trigon Prime. Oh, way over on the other side, was able to put down two hull points through the rear armor, through the jinking, yeah. uh, onto the hammerhead, even though, uh, but they didn't really do much. It just crew, crew stunned, so, or shaken, or whichever the lower one is. <laughs> yeah, so that's how that went. So we'll be back at the end of Tau Space Wolves turn one. End of Tau Space Wolves turn uh, one. Turn one. <laughs> so I start off my turn on a good note. I go to move 12 <laughs> inches with my guy to get away. So I can run away and hopefully not destroyed. And I roll on one to mobilize. So that got immobilized because I didn't detach my drones. The drones were also killed with it. So that killed like that. My rhino over there moving ran. My riptide shot at his gene stealer gene and stealer brood lord and managed to kill all five of the gene stealers. But the brood lord survived. The riptide also nova charged and fired the smart missile system twice. Other than that, my fire warriors shot. 27 shots into his Firen. Firen, yeah. but it was hitting on sixes, and I did manage to get one wound through, but uh, he passed the save. So that's what it looks like at the end of Tau, uh, Tau Space Holes turn one. 
now let's roll. Go ahead and roll for your reserves for your Alrighty. other. So target. these only come in on fives right now. Yes. So we'll start with the second trigon. Is in. The second flyrant is in. I swear my dice aren't loaded. <laughs> the other squad of termagants not in because okay. remember on a five up right now. Mm -hmm. Hormagants are not in. And the zonethropes are in. Wow, that's a lot of sixes right now. All right. So those are coming in. They're going to be coming in through deep strike or just regular reserves. Uh, well, both the right now my trigon prime's actually blocking the path. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, that, yeah. So when I a Trigon can't. Prime comes in, it makes a hole that things can come through. So his models can come through, but they can't come through because he's still on it. Yeah. So they're just going to come in through regular reserves? That is correct. They're going to have to come in through regular reserves this okay. turn. We'll be back at the end of Tyranid's turn two. So at the end of Tyranid's turn two, uh, the the Trigon met, wanted to deep strike here, but went over there. Other than that, the flyer came on right there, and the Zonothrope just came up on the boards from reserve right there. Uh, psychic phase, you... Psychic phase, uh, we paroxysmed the uh, Reptide, Reptide. Minus three. Yeah, so he's not going to be doing very well. No. Got off a bunch of other stuff, but you were a pro making those leadership tests now. Yeah. <laughs> God. Yeah, so he tried to use Psychic Scream at past both leadership tests on this guy and the squad that the was horror, there. And, and again, the Broodlord past yeah. another dominion so he'll keep his six inch synapse bubble up exactly shooting phase uh the this trigon shot and managed to finish off with the help of this flyer this rhino so this rhino is now mobilized the troops did get out and they're fine they're fine uh the trigon tune into the him the flyer tried to tune into him we did get rid of two wounds two from it yeah. uh, but that was all thanks to mr flyer himself yes and then over here I had uh, two dudes left after shooting phase. Yeah, I, just a I bunch of devour fled, shots. And oh, yeah. Was fleeing, so I got finished off because the two squads made it into combat. So we'll go into Tau Space Wolves turn two. Two. I currently have six models left on the table. So we'll this is the I desperate stand I again. <laughs> yeah. End of Space Tau <laughs> turn two. So my Riptide essentially moved and ran and did his assault jump from Nova charging three die six. Before that, he shot over here. He managed to kill five or killed two of these two guys. Of these guys and one of those guys yeah. with his shooting. And my Blood Claws moved six inches and ran six inches. So that's what was my turn. We'll go into Tyranids, turn three. End of Tyranids, turn three. The Hormones came on the board through his reserves and the other Termagons failed to do so. Other than that, uh, Psychic Phased, he... A proxism you did Proxism in my Riptide, down by one. He cast a Dominion on his Broodlord, so his Broodlord can have Synapse range, and... I Warp Blasted you, but you oh, passed I, all those saves. Oh, you Warp Blasted my Riptide, and I passed my saves with my Riptide. So, uh, we went into Shooting Phase. That one Hive Tyrant managed to do the three all remaining wounds. A ton of wounds. To my Riptide, so I managed to kill that, and... The combined firing of the Tyrant and the Trigon killed three of my Marines. So that is a leadership test. And it? they right. are... Or are they seven? Blood Claws. Uh-oh. So we'll, we'll give me one quick... We'll figure that out in a second, but I'm going to call the game regardless because i got two Marines left. I will not be able to outrun those Hormagons, no matter how hard I try, and those Hormagons will slaughter me in combat. You just got to, you just got to survive to turn five. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> so, I mean... Well, I'll play out the game, no problem. I'll play out the game, and we'll see. Well, hopefully these two survive. But other than that, I have two Marines left, which are fleeing right now. And, yeah, so... Let's see where this goes. Yeah, we'll be back at the end of Space Wolf's turn three. So, I was incorrect. I decided I would actually still play the game out, and I apologize for that. I charged in with my Blood Claws. I managed to kill one of his Hormagons. Yeah. And I actually lived through that combat, so he did, I guess you're in synapse range, so... Um, at the end of my turn right now, I am, just for okay. that one Hormagon at the end. No problem at all, so he's in synapse range, so he doesn't have to do a leadership test, so we'll go into Tyranid's turn four. So at the end of Tyranid's turn four, he just moved his Flyer closer and his Trigon closer. The, those Tyranids came out of the spawning hole from where the Trigon came in. Other than that, everybody else just moved, but they're way too far to do anything as the rest of the game, so... 
in the combat, I managed to kill three of his, and he managed to kill none of me. So we're going to turn five. Uh, space will turn five. I'll just do my attacks on camera quickly. So I uh, hit, hit all of the time. And to wound, I do two wounds. All right. Now, I will be going before you in combat. So even oh, though yeah, these two guys apologies. die, Sorry. that's okay. Even though those two die, we'll still make their attacks. So let's see. That would be five, ten, fifteen. And right now, let's see. I am down to one, two, three, four. Five, six guys. So that's actually just going to be 12 attacks. All right. Not a lot of hits, and on fours. That's five hits. Need five to wound. Two wounds. Two wounds. And oh, uh -oh. one dies. Oh, and the other. Lives. And the other. Okay, so right now, this could be. Yeah. Even though uh, I did win combat. Uh, no, you won combat. Yeah. I'm in synapse range. Let's go ahead and roll a die. On a one or a two, the game ends and you that win. That was turn four. No, this was yeah. turn, I think this was turn five. This was turn five? I'm pretty sure it was turn five. So this was turn four? One second. So, one, two, four. That was, that was turn to turn, that was uh, 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 Space Wolf turn four. four. Okay, so end of phase pile in. On to Tyranid turn five. Tyranid turn five. <laughs> All right, I got no more reserves. Yeah. So I, I, I can, I guess I can move now. Mm -hmm. You actually killed too many guys. Yep. <laughs> All right, psychic phase. I'm not really good. It's a whole ton. So I'm just gonna roll four dice at it. I'm going to try paroxysm you. It does go off. You get six dice to stop it. You don't stop it. <laughs> You're down by one. So you're out weapon skill. Two? Yep. Alright, charging in with the Hive Tyrant. He makes it in. Okay. This, unless, unless this roll gets yeah, super whiffed. So my oh. one Marine is dead. <laughs> nope. That's two hits. So way. two ones coming Double up. Double ones. First one is a two. Yeah. Sorry. So that's Close the end game. of... Space Wolves, Tau, we did lose. So good game, Davis. Good game, sir. We'll be back with the post-game show. Hey, Basement Collective, and thank you for watching another Basement Collective Battle Part. That was the first campaign mission in the battle for Dovar Prime. I'm Irvin, and this is... Davis. Davis. Okay, yeah, so that was a destructing battle there. Oh, my God, what a slaughter fest. Yeah, the Space Wolves and the Tau didn't really stand a chance. At the end, it was like a teeny tiny chance. But the dice was not on my side for that game. But that's Warhammer, so that's something you have to expect. But I had fun nonetheless. I had a lot of fun too. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting to go back and do some of those third edition missions. Yeah. Or, you know, I mean, some of them, they, they do a, a, a lot of the different stuff that you don't really see too much mm -hmm. of anymore. Uh, especially, you know, GW loves you to forge the narrative. Forge it harder. <laughs> but in the case uh, of the third edition missions, they really did some different stuff. Yeah. And maybe the rest of the campaign if you guys liked seeing that different style of mission let me know mm -hmm. and i will definitely try uh, to squeeze some more of those third edition ones in there because there's a few yeah there's a, a convoy one there's uh one where there's continual swarms of mm -hmm. stuff coming in whereas you get some free uh stronghold stuff to defend yeah. your lines with so that one was interesting yeah, yeah I, I didn't stuff. play in third edition i just started at the beginning of sixth edition so but they're all very different because now you have such amazing movement options in the yeah. game. Incredible movement options. Even in this game where, you know, I was kind of hunting you down. <laughs> you were still trying to get out there. And you had a lot of chances for that. The dice, unfortunately, didn't work out for it. But you know that there it was neat. It was a, it was a good idea. I think you had a good plan going in. Yeah, so for the campaign, basically what that's done is it's killed the hopes of the Imperials getting some Tau enforcement, the Tau, we couldn't save the Tau, and unfortunately all the Tau got slaughtered, so... Yeah, so right now, no the, the Tau are, are pretty upset, obviously, yeah. they're not, they're saying no, we're not even going to talk to you guys, yeah. uh, and there will be some repercussions for the decisions that were made. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, but we'll have to cover that in a fluff report yeah. at another time. Exactly. Yeah, but so that was the battle report. Uh, the one mistake I think I made this one game was I should have put my... I, I kind of forgot that he could deep strike in, so I should have put my hammerhead back so he couldn't get to the back of my hammerhead. 
that would have changed a bit. But other than that, I mean, every other choice I made, I think, was pretty sound. Just the dice not agreeing with me. But. Yeah, and sometimes that comes up, you know, and that's always the difficulty, you know, when you're having a skimmer or a vehicle start oh, in difficult oh, terrain. Mm -hmm. That's the risk that you take. Just like the risk of getting, of somebody seizing the initiative on you. It's fundamentally, it's the same risk. Yeah. Except, I guess, kind of, sort of lesser. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. So thank you for watching the Basement Collective Battle Report, uh, the first battle campaign. Just a side note, we do apologize. This video is uh, out a lot later than we would, uh, a lot later than we would have liked it to been. There was a few issues. Uh, again, my brother explained it previous video. I was in the hospital for a week, and uh, he can't do anything because of his voice. We actually did. Davis and Aaron filmed this battle report a few weeks back, two weeks ago, but for some reason, when the the video files didn't completely finish, so. We I'm had to fully film it blame, again. I'm going to fully blame Aaron for that. Yeah. I, I, you're, you're, I love you, Aaron, but I'm sorry. I'm. It's your fault. It's somehow your fault. I don't know how, but it is. But yeah, so yeah, so th this video will be out uh, pretty soon. Uh, just keep in mind, we do have the giveaway going on for the Imperial Night. Uh, we're 1,650 subscribers right now, so we're getting pretty close. So like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, a few videos back, a month or so back, there's a video where you comment for the went to win the Imperial Knight Ward and other than that, uh, thank you for watching the Basement Collective Battle Report. My name's Irvin and this is Davis and keep on wargaming. Bam.